Hey everyone, what's up? So what's the hands down king for Premiere? How about Blender? Due to producing a Ryzen overclocking Procast episode for MSI, I got my hands on a crisp new Ryzen setup to compare against our Intel i9-9900K we use for video production. With a new Ryzen 9 series 3900X coming in at $710 versus Intel's $485 price point on Amazon at the time of production, does the AMD CPU reflect the performance considering the $225 difference? What's going to take the performance and value trophies? We're going to answer that in today's episode. I'm Rick at Techspin and we've got exciting contests monthly now with our Drive to 5 giveaways. Be sure to connect with us on social media and get the latest reviews by clicking that subscribe button below and that bell icon with new content weekly. After a bit of a delay, we're back, and our updates should be a lot more frequent now that I quit my main job. Many things have happened here recently. We switched to Premiere for all projects, and we started doing video production for clients, now working on media for Advantech, a huge Taiwan-based IoT company. So after getting a handle on the first several projects, it was time to look at how to optimize production. So we just finished a How to Overclock Ryzen guide for MSI, which will appear here when it's uploaded. And from that, we got our hands on the whole setup. So thanks to MSI, we have an MEG X570 ACE motherboard for testing, a Ryzen 3900X CPU, and a Corsair H150i Pro 360mm AIO cooler, which is really the best case scenario for both of these CPUs. Both the X570 ACE and our Z390 Tomahawk have the latest BIOSes installed and the latest system and NVIDIA drivers. Now to preface our results, we're going to be presenting information here without bias, no fanboying here. Personally, I admit I do favor Intel a little bit, but at Techspin, you know, we deliver honest reviews and opinions, and results are what matter. And we're not gonna chicken out from a real answer like some online websites, for which is better, saying, it depends. What kind of BS answer is that? And they cite single core performance as a better metric for one CPU. <sighs> Sorry guys, this is 2019. Windows scheduler assigns programs to cores better, software uses multiple cores, and streamers and content creators need the extra horsepower. The quick summary, AMD wins hands down with a premier render without CUDA on a two minute, 26 second project completed 37 seconds faster at stock and 52 seconds faster than i9 overclock. Blender finished a minute and 10 seconds faster at stock and a minute 13 seconds faster overclocked. And we'll get into Cinebench R15 and R20 results in a bit. Just a quick reminder, if you want to connect with us online, we're on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all at Techspin Review. And there's links below if you decide to pick up Ryzen. You can support our channel by using our affiliate links to buy. It'll help us out here with no extra cost to you. Now I will say that I wasn't too surprised at the outcome. That shot came in the should you upgrade to i9-9900K episode we did at the end of last year, where I expressed a bit of buyer's remorse when I saw the Ryzen 1950X, which costed 30 bucks less than Intel's then flagship, post a 3000 Cinebench compared to the 9900K's 2044 and a crazy 3,482 at four gigahertz overclock compared to i9's 2,160. That made me really think about AMD for my next build, although we just invested in our Intel platform, so maybe this cycle? Let's go down to the benchmarks and don't forget that we would really like to hear your comparisons, benchmarks, and questions down in the comments. For the Intel build, we paired the Intel 9900K with an MSI MAG Z390 Tomahawk uh, Samsung 970 EVO, 500 gig, NVMe M.2, and 64 gigs of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 3200 with base clock 2133 MHz. Ryzen 3900X, we had on an MSI MAG X570 ACE with XPG 8200 Pro 256 gig NVMe M.2 with the performance on par with the Samsung drive. And 32 gigs of Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB 3000, you can see it probably down there, also with a base clock of 2133 megahertz. Stock settings were exactly that, with no tweaks in BIOS, so XMP was disabled. Overclocks had XMP enabled, only adjusting core ratio in BIOS. All tests were run three times, best of three was taken. Okay, let's start off with Cinebench R15, an Intel Post 2044 at stock, 2160 at our overclock of five gigahertz. Ryzen counters with 3100 point stock, 3,231 marks at 4.2 gigahertz overclock, and here, higher numbers are better. Cinebench R20 sees the 9900K with 4,810 at stock, 
4869 at 5 gigahertz. I did see similar results and took the best of three, but this result seems a little weird. I thought it would punch closer to 5000. The 3900X starts at 7021, marks stock, and achieves just under a 400 point increase to 7420 marks at a 4.2 gigahertz overclock. Again, higher is better. Blender's BMW test is an easy real life use case, so I would favor these results and the Premiere more than the synthetic Cinebench results. The i9 at stock performs well at 3 minutes 52 seconds, getting a small boost from 5 gigahertz at 3 minutes 46. Ryzen 9 finished 2 minutes 40 at stock and 2 minutes 33 seconds with that 4.2 overclock, lower times being better for this benchmark. So whereas Cinebench and the Blender BMW tests are standardized, the Premiere project isn't. I did grab and try to run Puget Systems 20 gigabyte benchmarking setup and files, but I couldn't get it working in the short time I had. Premiere testing was done with the 2 minute 20 second 1080p project for Advantech with some green screen throughout, but no LUTs applied. We rendered with only CPU and then with CUDA enabled afterwards. And due to the green screen alter key used, the GPU gets a very good workout with CUDA enabled. Lower times are better. First up is without CUDA, pure CPU benchmarks. The i9 at stock renders in five minutes, seven seconds. At five gigahertz, almost a minute faster at four minutes, 12 seconds. Ryzen on the other hand does exactly four and a half minutes at stock, posting three minutes, 20 seconds with a 4.2 overclock core. For content creators like myself, this excellent performance boost may well be worth the extra cash, saving time with a 12% boost at stock and a 20% time savings at overclock. We then enabled CUDA with our MSI GTX 1660 to see the gains. And we were not disappointed with the GPU sitting at 100% for the majority of the render with generally 30 to 40% CPU usage still. At stock, the 9900K does one minute 39 seconds. Overclocked, it shaves off two seconds at 137. The 3900X manages 1 minute 32 at stock, shaving off just 1 second at 4.2 overclock. Now it's easy to see that the 1660 Ti was the bottleneck here, so what can we do? Well we can run out and grab our brand new MSI RTX 2070 Super Gaming X Trio, a truly massive behemoth! I'm not even exaggerating at 32.5 centimeters or 12.75 inches. I couldn't fit it into the Vampire case I had the Ryzen build in or the Osiris case uh, from Sadie's I had been using for my main system while I picked up my next case. It ended up being a good thing though as without a case I could swap the Corsair H150i Pro to the Intel rig easily as you see here and uh, retest the overclock values as I wanted to be both as fair as possible and get the best results which we'll see in an upcoming episode. So with the latest Ryzen 3900X at $710 versus Intel's current $485 flagship, AMD is currently 32% more expensive. Do we get 32% more performance? But wait, we need to factor in the motherboard cost too. A cheap Gigabyte Z390 UD board goes for $125, and unlike Threadripper, X570 boards won't break the bank. This Asus Prime X570P goes for $170. Still a bit of a price premium, but not too bad but it does increase the Delta by 45 bucks to $270 more at minimum. Now we're looking at 880 bucks versus 610, 30% more. Small difference, but we strive for accuracy. If you're doing streaming while PC gaming at high spec, graphics rendering, or video editing, these are the numbers you should be looking at. Usually with Intel products, we see a decent power boost for a huge premium. With the Ryzen 9 lineup though, we're seeing a considerable advantage and linear price scaling with performance, which is pretty refreshing. For serious creators and people with a budget, we're recommending the Ryzen and X570 combo. Now, especially if you're looking at the Premiere results, you're probably saying, come on, Rick, but the results with CUDA enabled are amazing. That's true, but that depends if your project actually uses GPU sufficiently enough or not. If it does, considering a 2070 Super starts around 500 USD, just like with gaming, then upgrading the GPU will likely benefit you more than buying a whole new CPU motherboard combo if your project uses GPU a lot. Then again, if you've bought a X470 motherboard in the last few years, chances are with a BIOS flash, you might be able to use the new AMD CPUs. And if you have a second gen Ryzen and want to get the motherboard first, you should be able to use those in the X570 boards. Of course, do your homework and Google the motherboard CPU support list first, as not all older boards will be upgradable. While CUDA support in Premiere has been buggy or difficult to enable in the past, if you're able to use it in your workflow and you see 100% GPU usage for more than half of your renders, we'd actually recommend getting a 2070 Super instead of upgrading the CPU. 
The 2070 Super is basically an RTX 2080, just slightly hobbled, but with GDDR6 memory, making it a great price for performance pick if you're thinking of upgrading, even at just over 600 US, which is what I picked it up for here in Taiwan, and better and cheaper than a regular 2080. Speaking of which, if you're in the Taipei area and have a 2070 Super we can borrow for a day for testing, please hit us up on social media as we want to see these results as much as you do. For some excellent testing and benchmarking, do check out Brian from Tech yes City. He recently did a video called Is SLI Dead? which sees some interesting scaling for 2070 Supers in NVLink. Thanks again go to MSI for the great gear that we have, which allowed us to do some head-to-head -head testing we wouldn't have been able to do otherwise, and Corsair, especially for their H150i Pro, which kept temps down and really allowed these CPUs to perform to their best. So the takeaway here is whether you're an Intel or AMD fan, both the 9900K and 3900X provide excellent performance at their own price points. But if you're going for maximum power, AMD is definitely the way to go and you will pay a premium for extra cores. We'd also like to hear your thoughts on the benchmarks or on your own testing down in the comments. Upgrading your main editing rig is always costly, but hopefully this video gave you some information you can use. Hit that thumbs up if you found it helpful. To see more videos like this, please do subscribe for new content. Be sure to click that bell icon to get notified when we put up a new video. We always check the comments and we try to respond to most. So if you have a question or if you missed something, then please do tell us down below and let us know what you'd like to see next. We really appreciate you watching this far. Thanks for your time and we'll see you on the next. Bye for now.